Welcome to Keep the Faith Ministry. Today I have with me Dr. Thomas Jackson, who is uh, from Meet Ministry based in Tennessee. Welcome. Thank you for coming and joining good, us in good the to studio be here, today. Al. Good to be here. Very yeah. good. Very good. I got a few questions for you. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about Meet Ministry and what you do over there in Tennessee. Well, Meet Ministry, the word Meet is an acronym, M E E T, <clears throat> that stands for Missionary Education and Evangelistic Training. And so it's a multi faceted ministry. And I say established by God. And the ministry has been in existence for 28 years. And therefore, our very focus is equipping men and women, young and old, to combine the medical mission with the gospel in preparing the people for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So, so this is a 28 years. 28 years. How Going many graduates have you had in the 28 oh, years? I was counting maybe over several hundred. Several hundred. They okay. come from four corners of the earth. We just mm -hmm. finished one of our schools. It's a short course, four months, but intense. There with the school, coupled with the school, we have a lifestyle center, our home. And that's been in existence for over 28 years, where the students come and get a strong ground in biblical principles, understanding the message that God has given to his Advent people, the three angels message. They become very familiar with the principles, but not only that, how to impart that, how to give Bible studies, uh, how to uh, conduct help seminars, but at the same time, many of our students have gone forth and started their own ministry. So it's a combination. We have a, a canvassing program uh, that we work with one of the conference, uh, which also affords students the opportunity to earn income while getting the truth out to come to school. Uh, with that, we have a, a very, now this year, a very strong smart gardening program. Very, and with that, we do a lot of outreach, evangelism. But our evangelism always is combining the health with the gospel because we find that is the entering wedge. All right, so you, you've, you've had, you have students that come for a four-month course. Intense, that's right. It's very intense. That's right. And they get training in medical missionary work. Gospel work. Gospel work. The sanitarian work. The gardening we have Garden, also. Gardening, you have a garden? Almost oh, definitely. Now, once the students have been through the four-month program, do you do an internship with them? Yes, how, how do they train that's, that's, in the practical side? Well, they get practice. Then, they get practical while they're going through the school. Okay. Then we also have an intern pro program, which they do stay there, and most emphasis on the intern. They want to get in really more in depth into the health work, so they spend three, maybe from one to three months more into the intern program. Okay. So. Hands on. Uh, with that, while they're doing the hands on the intern, such as the health center. They're also working in the garden, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just continue to get more understanding of the Word of God. So they get training in outreach, too, is that right? Outreach, or most evangelism? Of evangelism. Then the mentorship. We take them out. We show them how to set up from start to beginning. If we got to say we're in Tennessee, western part of Tennessee, we're about 45 minutes from a major city, mm -hmm. Jackson. Okay. And so there's churches there. Mm -hmm. All right, and we're going to evangelize, just say do a campaign in Jackson because such supported ministries, we are to support the operation of these local churches. So we have to know, mm -hmm. build a relationship, go in, equip their people. They have to be a foot soldier because when we pull out of the evangelism, who's there to continue? Nobody, unless we prepare people. Mm -hmm. All right, so we teach the student. Number one, work with the churches, train them. They have <clears throat> syllabus, how to train the church folks, how to go door to door, mm -hmm. how to develop your uh, public information. Mm -hmm. So they are in the field, visiting. Uh, when we go out, like this year, I'm conducting seminars, students with me, mm -hmm. all right? They, partic they participate in aspect. Now this is a evangelistic seminar? Evangelistic. Okay, so you take them out with you on evangelistic seminars. That's, right. That's how you train them. That's right. Hands-on. Hands-on practical from, training. From the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. I'm very, I emphasize this. In my years, I've seen it over and over from every country. People get out there. you got hundreds of people coming. But you've got to have a force of workers to follow up. Like if you're an evangelist, I'm only there for a month or two. 
Now, when okay, I, but your training provides the students with practical skills so they can go two. and teach others. That's right. So what is your vision? The vision is the fact that God get this ministry, these ministry, truly self-supporting ministry, at a place where he had intended, like a Madison school was, mm -hmm. that he intended that it is to go beyond its borders, putting out trained, thorough, concentrated men and women to duplicate mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. We see mm -hmm. sporadic. How? What I've learned over 40 years, we have become information dispensers, mm -hmm. but nothing sustainable. Mm -hmm. But we do mm -hmm. see some pockets mm -hmm. will give us a little hope. But just imagine how, how long you've been into this movement, how long I've been into this movement, that I believe the God you and I serve is not limited. It's only we tend to tie God's hand because self and pride mm -hmm. and our way of executing things, mm -hmm. doing a good thing, but the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And I believe time is winding up. So the vision I have is the vision that God has for this work way before you and I was born. All right. Talk to me about medical missionary work. Mm. Medical missionary. How important is medical missionary work? I and mean, what is medical missionary work? Medical mission work is indispensable. That means it cannot be separated. Mm -hmm. Nowhere. As the arm to the body. Christ is the great exemplar of that. Mm -hmm. He did more healing than teaching. All through the scripture, we can sit here for hours going through the scripture. You're going through the scripture. There may be people who will listen to this taping. And many folks out there are medical missionaries. But we got to understand, medical missionary is not medical mercenaries. How many people should be involved in medical missionary? The whole church. All right. <laughs> when you say the whole church, what let, do you mean? Let me listen. We, a very familiar quote, we'll come to a time that every member of the church should take hold of medical missionary work. I'm going to go a step further. Only medical missionary workers will be sealed. Okay. What do you mean by that? When we think of the seals of God, mm -hmm. the Sabbath, medical mm -hmm. missionary work and the Sabbath, Isaiah 58, ties it intimately together. Okay. And we are preaching, mm -hmm. we're going to be sealed and preaching, and we sit in that, in a pew, Center or just so not anybody who's faithful to the Lord is going to be a medical missionary. Amen. Leader. And anybody who's a medical missionary work and faithful to the Lord is going to be sealed. Amen. Because their characters Amen. are being Reflect. reflecting the character of Christ. It's not just the mechanic, mm -hmm. but it's the spirit mm -hmm. that drives the mechanic. Mm -hmm. Very but well we said. got to first understand in our mind as a body of people, self supporting, the regular lines, church members, every member. Now, when I say that, you might have folks listen. What do you mean? I'm not a doctor. I'm not a law. I'm not. I'm not a nurse. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. If we truly understand medical missionary work, that's what we're going to do. So, what then can? What kind of medical missionary work can church members do? Oh man! Oh. That uh, can you know make them part of this movement? And, and one thing we want to emphasize: we got to get a broader understanding. First of all, let me tell you what medical missionary work is not. Medical missionary is not primarily distributing of herbs and vitamins and supplements, mm -hmm. okay? It might not just hydrotherapy. It's not massage therapy. Are you listening to me? Medical mission work is benevolent work. Isaiah 58 is a clear description, eight lines in that chapter, clearly outlined medical mission work. And when you read that chapter, you see it says, then, now, nah, you're a person of very particular words. What does that word then? Well, I'm following on. Hello. So, not until you get this, then your righteousness would not come about. So, medical mission work is a benevolent work. It is reaching out to people. It is a revelation of the love of God, practically ministering to people, physical, mental, and spiritual need. And now, so, if I know herbs, if I know hydrotherapy, that plays a part. So, that's a, that's a very broad definition of medical missionary work. It's not narrowed down to just a certain few activities. Amen. It's much bigger than it's that. Bigger it's bigger than what it, we it, think. It's, it's in every area every of area. benevolence. Would you say? That, every <laughs> area of benevolence right. that you can perhaps possibly think of. That means that for is not exclusive. It includes everyone from the 80-year-old woman in the church still got a mind and said, can go and touch somebody's life. That's great. That, that's uh, Does that's that make important. Sense? Yeah. It, it is because our training... Because people think... If, if they're going to be a medical missionary work, they think they have to have 
uh, you know, training in in all the different things, which is good. The, you know, the, hydrotherapy, the, massage, the, the modalities, and nutrition, and exercise, right. and whatever other modalities there are. That's right. Um, and all that is good. It's good to get it's more important. training in it's, that. It's important because it's but going to really the underlying philosophy that you're saying about medical missionary work is the idea that you can help somebody else in whatever way that is. In every way, that's medical missionary work. You look at the life of Christ while he's on earth, the sick, the poor, his whole purpose was a purpose of restoring men mm -hmm. and women mm -hmm. physically, mentally, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. That is medical missionary. We are the arms. See, medical missionary work must have flesh on it. Mm -hmm. Love with skin on it. Mm -hmm. Clean somebody's house. Cleaning their toilet. Hmm? Get by the bed. Hygiene. Sir. Hygiene. Mm -hmm. Listen to them. Prayer. It's much broader. And that's why it's not only just for those who have gone through a heartland or meat ministry. Every church. That's why we can take students go into the church and begin to really give a clear understanding of what this work is all about. And every person in the church said, now when we read the statement, hell, it will come to a time when every member now, it didn't say a few, let's think that mm -hmm. way, every when member. every member must take hold of medical mission work. Mm -hmm. It didn't say every member mm -hmm. got to be mm -hmm. an MD, an ND. Well, how long have you been in medical mission 40 missionary? years. 40 years. Since I became an Adventist. Okay. <laughs> how did the Lord take, bring you into medical missionary? My wife, which we've been married for 44 years. Okay. Uh, from Chicago. I was born in the South, but I left uh, Alabama at the age of three on a Greyhound bus with a shoebox of chicken and biscuits. <laughs> so I spent all of my educational years and formative years in Chicago mm -hmm. school. And um, from a very poor family, eight children, matriarchal society, my mother was the force. No father. Mm -hmm. She did a wonderful job cleaning toilets, a maid on welfare. And uh, my sisters were very close, had a close family. Went to school, basketball became my passion because I thought at that time that was my ticket my bread ticket to get my mother out of the ghettos. And I uh, went to school, went to a very good high school and uh, played sport, sports basketball exceptionally well to the point they thought they wanted to give me money to go to college. <laughs> in high school, I majored in electrical engineer because I had a brother. So I went to a college in Iowa. I was probably about uh, four or six black on that college campus, private college, Catholic college. Hmm. I was driven, you know. I was more sports oriented than academic, but it was a private school, very, you know, very high, and, and I was driven. And uh, I suffered with arthritis. Uh, I was the age of 17. Mm. And I always had a, then eventually I was diagnosed with, you know, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid, okay. And uh, even in high school, I had wrapped up, and I was, I was driven by that passion, man. I'm bringing this out. I had a passion for that sport. I was getting ready to be drafted into the NBA. I was in my junior year in the Vietnam War, the Vietnam War. They had a draft lottery. I was 53 on the draft lottery. That means my number was high, mm -hmm. NBA high. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of that, I, I, I had further injuries, further injuries. And uh, my junior year, that kind of stopped that process of being drafted. I didn't, I grew up in a Baptist home, Catholic college, wife of fifth generation Lutheran. I'm into black power. I was more oriented to the black pantheism. I was more of an existentialism, socialist of the movement. But anyway, long story short, the army rejected me which was mm -hmm. hallelujah, mm -hmm. I didn't know God, mm -hmm. gave me the highest rejection because mm -hmm. of my arthritis. Mm -hmm. And I began to pick up the Bible, Harold, mm -hmm. as a book of philosophy. That's why I looked at the Bible. I had a problem with Jesus because he was white. And I grew up in this black mindset. 
and Jesus was not relevant to the black people. But I love the word of God, and I just picked up, and the book of Genesis resonated with my heart, and the book of Leviticus. And I read a statement, I think it was my junior year, Leviticus 1711, I read that. It says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Mm. And I pondered that and did my little search. There was no computer. I said, life of the flesh. And I went on, got referencing, no blood, et cetera. And I began to do a little study about this blood, and I had arthritis. But anyway, make a long story short, then one of our, one of the alumni, was the president of alumni, older guy, that had stake, had financial investment in a meat packing house mm. in that town. Mm -hmm. The Butte Packing House, where we can work part time. Phew, terrible. I worked in that packing house. Mm -hmm. I worked on the gut line, conveyor belt. My job was to detach the intestines, rather detach the liver from the intestine and the gallbladder, because it was parasitic. That's when I discovered mm -hmm. what they were using the intestines for, the hot dogs and mm -hmm. a few other things. Terrible, man. My job was cut, pulled, cut. And the college got all their meat from that packing house, pork chops, and et cetera. Mm. And as I read the word of God, and I read about no pork, and my folks grew up on pork, man. They grew up on chitlins. You know mm. what chitlins is. Yeah. You know, mm. man, whoa. That's what I grew up on. So make I tell you, mm. working that company, studying the Bible, I came to the conclusion at that age, no more pork for me. Mm. Just no more pork. You were 17. I was 17, 18 years old. No more pork. Mm -hmm. And then I begin to study the uric acid and et cetera, and et cetera. That's it. Army um, reject me. Praise God for that. My career tried to continue to play. I went on and graduated. They inducted me into the Hall of Fame in that college. And um, I started studying more and more. And then since my bout with sports kind of short-lived, uh, I taught for a while and I went back to school, graduate mm -hmm. school, got a mm -hmm. master's degree in education. So I became more prone. I still love sports. But I wanted to start a school. And this I'm still not an Adventist. Hmm. My diet has changed a little bit. Hmm. My Your wife, head clearing up. My head is clearing up. <laughs> the word of God. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling away from my attachment to my mm -hmm. family. My wife, uh, we met at 17. And now when I got out of school, got out of college, and eventually we got married. It was in our 20s. And my diet has changed. Hers not changed. You know, no more pork. Uh, sugar was causing my problem. I read in the Word of God, the de deceitful meats, dainties, deceitful meats. So mm -hmm. I got, so God just got me out for sugar. Within a year, that that ten year battle with arthritis, my water it disappeared. Huh? It disappeared, man. I could not predict the weather mm. no more. I can tell you when mm. it was going to rain, mm. when it was going to snow. My joints. Uh, I can show you pictures of my my hands, ankles. I got a, the sugar intake was eliminated. The pork was eliminated. Mm -hmm. The fried food was eliminated. The water mm -hmm. intake mm -hmm. increased. Now, I'm already active, so exercise was my part. So the sugar was robbing my body of calcium and stuff. And when that happened, I get up in the morning, man, and with the elasticity in my step. New creature. Mm. And I picked the door. I said, man, this is true. So I end up in Huntsville, Alabama. That's the whole story in itself. I have a brother. Property in Huntsville. I got a dream to do a school, but it was not at, in this movement because I was definitely uh, had a passion for blacks, young people. Getting out of Chicago, surviving Chicago beyond 17 was a miracle. Mm. Gangs, drugs, mm -hmm. killings. I see my friends sitting on the porch, drive by shooting. Gangs would come to school, put your name, they find out who you are on the board. We had to send my, my wife's brother out of the city, out of the state, recruiting. I was an athlete, I became friends with folks, you know, and I, I knew it. So I ended up in Huntsville, Alabama. And this is where my Adventist journey started. We had property there, 15 acres, way down the street. I didn't know anything about Adventist. My wife would reluctantly live there. My brother said, Come, I want to start a school. Like I went to school, you know where if the child and student were not college qualified, but they would get the very academic and the tools. Because mm -hmm. I went to high school. Practical like, That's right. I went to high school. Engineering, mm -hmm. carpentry, sewing, mm -hmm. baking. You know, I went to school like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I had two German shepherds. I'm bringing up two German shepherds. A black German shepherd and one like Renton Ten. Princess and king. King, a black German shepherd, seven feet tall. When he stand up, he put his hands on your Volkswagen. He rocked the Volkswagen. Nobody come up that hill. Mailman don't come up because it's down there. Bikers come up, think nobody up there. They fly one way, bike all the way. King, gorilla eyes. I'm saying something for this. I'm saying this for a reason. I get a ring on my door, my wife and I. Big house, big house up on the hill. I get a ring on my door, big doorbell. Nobody ring my doorbell unless my brother, someone else. Okay, I thought my brother. I open the door. There was a gentleman standing at the door. I'll tell you his name in a minute because you know him too. This was in 1970, 76 or 77. Something's wrong, 78. He wanted to sell our house because he heard about that time. Big house. He now introduced himself. I'm looking around his shoulders. The reason I'm looking around. For the dogs. That's right. Either he <laughs> shot my dogs or something happened. <laughs> you don't come up my house without losing <laughs> arms and legs. <laughs> he walked on in. I introduced him. He introduced himself. I said, excuse me. Uh, how did you get up here? I drove. Okay. How did you get out your car? I just walked up here. Did you see my dogs? Yes. He said, what's wrong? I said, no one get out of their car on this land without losing their life. He just smiled. He said, yeah. They saw the angels. This is the first time I heard the man say that. They saw those angels around me. That's why I didn't even move. I'm looking at this guy. Hmm. So he come on in. <laughs> he said, yeah. Are you interested in selling your house? I'm still, this stuff resonated with me. I said, well, no, we're not. Uh, uh, I'll show you around. He said, okay. And he said, uh, if, you think, if you think about selling my, your house, he gave me his card. Grabbed my hand. He said, because, he said to me, because you're so kind, I'd like to leave you a couple books. I said, okay. It was Steps of Christ, Bible reading for the home. Mm -hmm. He shook my hand and said, here's my car. Let me these two books. He was walking out. I said, let me go out with you because <laughs> I'm with my dog. You know? He said, that's all right. be all right. I said, no, let me in. He walked through. Patrick King, big black Patrick, got in the car. Drove off. Hmm? I looked at my wife. I looked at these books. Hmm. So let me fast forward. You know that man, who that man was? Tell me. Richard Bland. Oh, okay. You know Richard Bland? Yeah, sure. United Prison Ministry. Mm -hmm. And so, make a long story short. Now, you know how thick Bible reading home is. So, it depends on the version, but yeah. Well, that version probably had over 600 some pages or mm -hmm. more. And Step to Christ, I still got my book today. I delved into those books. That's the story. I, I delved into those books. And Bible reading of home, I always wanted answers for certain things. And, then the Sabbath point jumped out. So I read that. I devoured that book in two days. So man, the steps of Christ became the solid ground for me when I understood what it means to give your heart to the Lord. And my brother, the property we had, things got kind of financially rough. So we, you know, we had to foreclose on the property. And I, we had my family with me and we had nowhere to go. Richard knew my brother a little bit. Anyway, I end up, Richard ended up calling me. He said, what you mm -hmm. doing? I told him the situation, because I never lived with nobody in my life. I'm independent. I have two degrees at that time, got a family. He invited me to come stay with him. That's a story in itself. I ended up staying with that man for a couple of years in his house, downstairs. Mm -hmm. I'm not even an Adventist. My wife definitely is not an Adventist. My wife smoked like a steam engine, <laughs> the dressing and what have you. And uh, I sent her back to Chicago because mm -hmm. we had to regroup. She went back to Chicago to work, and I stayed there. Downloading. Great controversy. Desire Ages. Ministry of Healing. He gave me all those books. Hmm. I went looking for a job, couldn't find it. I was the old qualified, didn't have nothing. I devoured those books. Ministry of Healing became a very source of education. So that inspired you to Definitely. get involved in medical missionary Hello. work? So reading medical, medical 
ministry of healing. Uh, sorry, ministry of healing. And medical ministry. And medical ministry. That thrust me Inspired you into uh, medical missionary work. That's right. Well, that's very interesting. That's right. How important do you think, how, how important is medical missionary work in the end times? Well, like I said earlier, Al, it is tied intimately with the seal of God. Mm -hmm. To prepare people for the seal of God. Because you mentioned one thing, the seal of God will be placed on people who reflect by God's grace fully. You read in a wonderful book, Christ mm -hmm. Opposite, that's page 69. Mm -hmm. God is waiting what for perfect, perfect reproduction of himself and his care for his people. Medical mission work is Christ revealed. The work we do, it flows from an unselfish heart, a love that is poured out without expectation. I've been in this work 40 years. I've been everywhere. People gave me honey instead of money to put in my automobile. I, stories after stories. You've been in this work. I've been places. It has to be a love that is actuated by the Spirit of God, the character, the joy, the fruits of the Spirit. Medical mission work brings us out of our comfort zone into the trenches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no other way. The, the standing in preaching is very important, but you got to put some flesh on that preaching. I know what I'm talking about. And that's what medical missionary yes, work does. It, it put flesh puts on. flesh on it the put, preaching. Come on. Flesh on. Amen. You, you just don't go and preach and now go back to your book, kick up. Oh, I done a good, I done gave a good dissertation. Man, it drove home. Mm. <laughs> okay. Look at Christ. He's our exemplar. Look at him. He constantly went about doing good. Doing good. That's what it is. Benevolent, Benevolent work, work, doing good. And those things you mentioned, with the students that get the tools of emergency medicine, like herbs and stuff, that comes in handy. When I go into the jungles of Papua New Guinea, if I go to Africa, I know what we used to do. But touching people's lives, man, putting your hands, touching their lives, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. coming closer, taking a, I mean, a, a unselfish interest in their needs, weeping with them when they weep, rejoice with them when they rejoice. Coming close, it says that Christ's method, see, these quotes are nothing new to us, alone gives success. Huh? Christ's method alone. He came close That's to right. the people. Mm -hmm. He ministered their need. He showed compassion. He won their confidence. And then he said, Come follow me. That's medical mission work. That's going to prepare us for the seal of God. That's where only servants will be sealed. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you sharing about medical missionary work. Thank you for sharing My about blessing. your ministry. My pleasure. And we wish you God's blessing Thank as you, you continue to work for him while ever you have life and breath. Amen. I like that. Thank okay. you for joining us today at Keep the Faith Ministry. Uh, Dr. Thomas Jackson is with us here, and he is uh, working at Meek Ministry as its leader and director. And uh, we wish him God's blessing. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.